Over here is where data comes in and out of the chip. 50 years ago, the fastest computer on Earth could process maybe a few hundred punch cards a minute. Today, data goes in and out billions of times faster. And here is the processor. 50 years ago, a computer could add a few thousand numbers in a second. In that same amount of time, this tiny chip can perform billions of calculations. Scientists have discovered that the secret to cheap computing power is size. When we find the right materials and make them small, they change the world. The race to miniaturize began 500 years ago with an invention that in its day was the first personal computer. I'm talking about the watch. How did they go from big wall-mounted grandfather clocks to something you can wear on your wrist? The miniaturization? More functions in a smaller space? Mm. Pierre Gigax is a watchmaker in Switzerland. Some of his watches have more than 400 components. And how small are some of the parts? There are parts which are 0.006 millimeter. So that means uh, a half the thickness of a hair. Hundreds of precision metal pieces, all driven by a simple mechanism that all clocks have in one form or another. The oscillator, the beating heart of the machine. It's the piece that puts the tick and the tock in time. You know, the time is flowing. And it's always difficult to measure something flowing. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we, we cut the time in slices. And the oscillator is counting the slices. Mm -hmm. The original oscillator was the pendulum, slicing like a knife through time, with each swing counted by the movement of circular gears. But pendulum clocks work only if they're upright in a fixed position. So in the Middle Ages, clocks were confined to immovable structures like towers or furniture. But in the 15th century, the invention of the mainspring changed everything. It was essentially the first battery, a metal coil that could store mechanical energy. As it unwound, the mainspring powered a compact wheel. It was a major breakthrough. Suddenly, gravity and the pendulum were no longer necessary. The new spring-driven mechanism made it possible to shrink the clock to fit into a hand or a pocket. And the pocket watch was born. This watch is absolutely amazing. It shows the exact position of the sun and the moon all around the Earth from the top of the North Pole. <laughs> oh, man, and, uh, that's really cool. And how much does this watch go for? Between 80 and 90 but no need to spend 90 grand to find out what time it is. Nowadays, super accurate watches are disposable. Thanks to another great clock revolution, which began in the 1960s, out went the spring and mechanical oscillator, replaced by a tiny sliver of solid mineral quartz. Slice a piece of quartz small enough, send an electric current through it, and it vibrates, fast. A quartz-driven clock can accurately chop time into millionths of a second. But the biggest selling point for quartz is that it's cheap. That's because quartz is actually silicon, commonplace sand, the second most abundant element on Earth. For the first time, a material replaced a machine, opening the door to a new era of miniaturization. But silicon can do more than just mark time. It's a member of a strange class of elements called semiconductors. 